Hello everyone, David A. Cox here with PCClassesOnline.com and uh, today we're going to be doing a little video for all of you if you've recently gotten a Mac, but frankly this is going to be helpful I think to everyone who has a Mac uh, on how to use hotkeys. Now if you don't know what a hotkey is, it's basically a combination of keys that you would press on your keyboard that cause a certain action to take place. For example, copying and pasting. And what's funny is that in doing research for these classes, I look around and I see what anyone else out there has done. And I haven't found a single person who's done a really in-depth uh, class or video on the most important hotkeys that are out there. So hopefully you all will enjoy this and uh, tell your friends about our classes. So let's get started. Now, what I've done is I've gone through all of the hotkeys that are out there for the Mac and selected the most important ones that are the most relevant to our users. Now, if you've come over to a Mac from a PC, a lot of the different hotkeys that you're going to hear are very, very similar to the way they are on a PC. Now, a lot of hotkeys involve the command key, uh, which I'll show you when you see this, the symbol for command so that you know what that looks like. It's the key that is next to your spacebar on either side. Uh, a lot of the hotkeys for a PC use control, whereas basically almost the exact same ones are the same on the Mac, it's just that you're using the command key instead. So let's start and go over them. Uh, the first two that most people want to know are copy and paste, and it is almost identical as it is on a PC. Copy is command C, and paste is command V. Next is select all. So if you have let's say a bunch of photos and you want to select all of them at the same time instead of having to hold the command key and click on every single one of them the easy way to do it is simply use command and the letter A. Maybe you're on a website and you want to print something up. Print is command P. Save is command S. New, so for example let's say that you're uh, in a website and you want to open a new window. A new window would be command N. The other option that you do have, and I'm going to show you my screen at this moment, so just so I can give you an example here. Okay, so if I'm on Google and I want a new window and I do command N, this is what I get. You can see I now have two windows on my desktop. But I don't like windows because they, uh, well, <laughs> don't get me started on that joke. But what's much easier, instead of using a new window, is to use a new tab. And here's how you do a tab. It's Command T. So when I do Command T, you'll see here at the top, I can simply click on here and I'm on Google. If I click over here, let's say I was on Apple's website, I could go between Apple and Google and just click between these two tabs to go back and forth. And especially as you start to go to more and more websites, so maybe I add in another one, and I'm going to my buddy Fleetwood, Fleetwood Hicks, co uh, Shark Tank guy, amazing, amazing company. I can go between Villy Customs, Apple, and Google. And you can see I really have a, a very clean desktop. I don't have windows everywhere. So that's tab, command T. Next is close. Now, let's say you're actually in Safari. If I do close, which by the way is command W, it will close one tab at a time. Okay? The other example of this is let's say I have my finder window open right now. Okay? So I'm in here and I want to get out of it. I can just hit Command W and that will close that window out. Next is quit. We'll go back into Safari as an example. If I want to quit out of Safari altogether so that it completely, completely shuts down, Command Q. You'll see a lot of these are very similar to as they are on a PC. If I want to open something, let's say I have a photo on my desktop and I want to open that, I can click on it once just so that it's highlighted and hit Command O. Go back to my desktop for a second here. Another one that's really helpful, let's see here, let's go into Documents. Now let's say I have a ton of things here that I want to send to the trash. Instead of having to click on each one and drag it to the trash, here's another way around it. I can select all the ones that I want so that they're highlighted. So I, for that I just clicked and dragged. You can do whatever method you prefer to select them. And the hotkey way to send them all to the trash is Command Delete. So if I do that right now, bam, they're all gone. 
Which brings me to the, possibly the most important one in the Mac, undo. So if I want to go back a step, that would be Command and the letter Z. And they come back to life. Now, depending on which Mac you have, uh, if you have one of the short keyboards, so in other words, you don't have a number pad on the right-hand side of your keyboard, one of the things a lot of PC users miss is having backspace. So, for example, let me, uh, let me throw open a Pages document here so I can show you. Oops, sorry about that. So let's say I misspell... I misspell paleontologist. There's too many O's in that. So what I can do, if I, PC users would normally probably put their cursor in the middle and then they would hit backspace. So that would knock it back. Whereas for the users on the Mac who are using the short keyboard, you would have to put the cursor to the right and then hit delete. Well, you, your computer actually does have backspace. And the way you do it, if you have one of the short keyboards, is you're going to hold down the function key, which would be the very bottom left key. It says FN and then hit delete. And you'll see it does the exact same thing. Personally, I recommend just getting used to going to the right of it and just hitting delete, but I wanted to show you all how to do it. Next one is bookmarks. Now, let's say, let's get out of this. Let's say you're on a website and, uh, oh, I don't know. Well, let's just say, for example, pcclassesonline.com. No shame. And let's say I want to bookmark this, okay? The way you would do it in Safari, and uh, this applies to most of the different web browsers, is Command D. Now from here, you're going to probably get a couple different options. You can either usually save it to your bookmark bar or the bookmark menu. And this is a little off topic, but it's important and relevant information. The bookmark bar is this space right up here that you see, this gray space, as opposed to the bookmark menu is when you actually click on where it says bookmarks and they would be listed right here. I don't have any, but that's where they would be listed. Okay, so once again, bookmarks would be uh, Command D. It's not normal on the Mac for an application to malfunction and uh, freeze up, but every once in a while it does happen. So PC users are used to doing uh, Control Alt Delete. On a Mac, it's Command, Option, and Escape. So if I do that right now, you'll see a list of all the different uh, applications that are running in the background. If there was one that was malfunctioning, let's say Twitter, Twitter would probably be in red and it would say application not responding. You simply click on it and hit force quit. And it's going to give you this pop-up. You'd click force quit. The only thing to know is if it's say something like a document, if you have unsaved information, you could potentially lose information on it. But that's a big one to know. Command, uh, command option escape. Next is log out. Say you have a ton of accounts on your computer, one for the you know, one for the kids, one for you, one for whomever. Um, the way you can quickly log out is Shift Command Q. I'm not going to do that because if I did, I would lose all of you right now. Uh, here's a helpful one. Let's say you are in Safari and you come across something that you want to share with a friend. Let's just go to CNN as an example. And uh, let's go to, oops, sorry about that. Okay, let's say I find an article I want to share with friends or something like that. Uh, a cool way you can do this is simply when you're in Safari, and this is specific to Safari, just hit Command and the letter I. And what it will do is it will launch your email program, and there you go. It's taken the article and it put it right into my email for me. Once again, that is Command and the letter I. Uh, also, in the topic of Safari, uh, say, for example, you want to refresh the page. Maybe you're on eBay and there's an auction that is coming up and you want to see how many bids are on it. The way you reload a page in Safari is Command-R. Another one I wanted to throw out there, forgive the quick edit some of you may have just caught. Uh, there was one I forgot that I wanted to put out there, uh, is a screenshot. So there are three different methods for how you can take a screenshot of what, whatever is on your desktop. Uh, so I'm going to go over the three different methods. And where this is great is let's say you're dealing with someone who's maybe a techie like me and you're trying to describe some sort of an issue. For me, if a client has taken the step of doing a screenshot of the exact 
error message or whatever it is they're seeing, it's so much easier. Um, it's also just great to know. You never know when you're going to need this particular command. So as I said, there are three different ways to take a screenshot. The first method is the entire screen, everything. The way you do that is Command, Shift, and the number three. And you may be able to hear a little shutter sound effect will go off when you do that. And if you actually look at my desktop, you will now see that there is a photo, there you go, of the entire screen. The next method is only a selected portion. So let's say I want to take a screenshot of just the PC Classes Online logo, this little thing here. Uh, so what I can do for that is you bump over one key. It's Command Shift 4. And what will happen is if you look at my cursor, you may notice that it just turned into a crosshair. So what you would do is you would put it at the theoretically the top right corner, although you can technically do any corner, and you're going to drag and when you let go of the cursor, you will hear the same sound effect, and there it is on my desktop. Final method, I'm going to open a uh, Safari window for this one. And uh, let's go to another website just so that we can distinguish it. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's say I want to take a photo of just this web browser window. The other way you can do it uh, is actually very similar to the second method I just showed you. You are going to do Command Shift 4. But then there's one additional step. Once you've done Command Shift 4, you're going to tap the space bar. And what's going to happen is your cursor is going to turn to a little camera icon. So you can see here that as I move over the web browser, that whole window turns blue. If I move it over the desktop, the whole desktop turns blue. So when you have it on the window that you want to uh, take a photo of, just click. Same thing. That's how you do a screenshot. And we have one more, and then I'm going to show you an extra little trick, a little bonus for all of you. Zoom in and out. So I deal a lot with uh, clients who are typically 50 plus. It's kind of my specialty. They're my peeps, if you will. And I run to a lot of people who have trouble seeing the text on their screen, a lot of times more than anything in websites. So I want to show you two tricks here. The way you zoom in is Command Plus. Likewise, zoom out is Command Minus. So if I do that right now, you can see I can keep on hitting it and it just keeps zooming in and out of the screen, okay? Command plus and command minus. However, one of the things a lot of people uh, become frustrated by is if they go back to this website a lot, every single time they go back to it, they've got to zoom in again, unless you do this trick. What you're going to do is you're going to go to Google. Oops, spells. it does help if I spell Google correctly. And you're going to type in Zoom Extension Safari. And you see this top one right here. It says Download All Pages Zoom Safari Extension for Mac. You're going to click on that. And I'll walk you through the rest. You're going to click where it says Download Now. It's a very small file. Now, anytime you download something in the Mac, it goes into your Downloads folder. The way you get there is you go to Finder, which is always here on the bottom of your dock on the left-hand side. We're going to go into Downloads, and it's right here at the top. And you're going to just simply double-click on it. You're going to get this pop-up, and it says, Are you sure you want to install extensions, all pages, Zoom? Click Install, and that's it. So the way this works is this is a little add-on to your web browser. And I should mention they do have versions of this for all the different web browsers out there. But what it's going to do is it's going to remember how far zoomed in you were so that the next time you come back, it's exactly in the same location. So that's a great little trick, especially if, uh, if you have trouble with your vision. Someone who's on a 13-inch laptop might have trouble seeing things. Uh, it's a great little extension, and it's free. So I hope this uh, helped a lot of you. Obviously, this is a recorded video, so if you want to go back and uh, write them down, I completely encourage you. This is David A. Cox with PCClassesOnline.com, and you all have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.